Georgia research gurus create first functional graphene semiconductor. With an electrical conductivity somewhere in between that of conductors and insulators, semiconductors have become an indispensable part of modern electronics over the years. In a breakthrough newspaper published in Nature, an international research team has unveiled the world's first functional semiconductor made from graphene. The research team, led by Professor Walter D. Heer of the Georgia Institute of Technology, says that their discovery could open the door to a whole new way of building electronics. To avoid missing any of our new videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell notification feature. Sharing is greatly valued, and we appreciate your participation and feedback in the comment section below. Let's dive in. Nearly all electronics currently use silicon as their semiconducting component. However, in the face of increasing demand for faster computing and smaller electronic devices, silicon is approaching its physical limit. Semiconductors, which are materials that conduct electricity under specific conditions, are foundational components of electronic devices. The team's breakthrough throws open the door to a new way of doing electronics. Their discovery comes at a time when silicon, the material from which nearly all modern electronics are made, is reaching its limit in the face of increasingly faster computing and smaller electronic devices. Walter De Heer, Regents Professor of Physics at Georgia Tech, led a team of researchers based in Atlanta, Georgia and Changjin, China, to produce a graphene semiconductor that is compatible with conventional microelectronics processing methods, a necessity for any viable alternative to silicone. In this latest research published in Nature, De Heer and his team overcame the paramount hurdle that has been plaguing graphene research for decades, and the reason why many thought graphene electronics would never work. Known as the band gap is a crucial electronic property that allows semiconductors to switch on and off. Graphene didn't have a band gap, until now. The year started to explore carbon-based materials as potential semiconductors early in his career, and then made the switch to 2D graphene in 2001. He knew at that time that graphene had potential for electronics. We were motivated by the hope of introducing three special properties of graphene into electronics, he said. It's an extremely robust material, one that can handle very large currents and can do so without heating up and falling apart. De Heer achieved a breakthrough when he and his team figured out how to grow graphene on silicon carbide wafers using special furnaces. They produce epitaxial graphene, which is a single layer that grows on a crystal face of the silicon carbide. The team found that when it was made properly, epitaxial graphene chemically bonded to the silicon carbide and started to show semiconducting properties. Over the next decade, they persisted in perfecting the material at Georgia Tech and later in collaboration with colleagues at the Qianjin International Center for Nanoparticles and Nanosystems at Qianjin University in China. De Heer founded the center in 2014 with Lai Ma, the center's director and a co-author of the paper. In its natural form, graphene is neither a semiconductor nor a metal, but a semimetal. A band gap is a material that can be turned on and off when an electric field is applied to it, which is how all transistors and silicon electronics work. The major question in graphene electronics research was how to switch it on and off so it can work like silicon. Graphene's electronic and mechanical properties make it an ideal candidate to be applied in various types of sensors. The market for sensors is extremely large since it includes many industries such as automotive, electronics, and healthcare among others. Therefore, it is an excellent starting point for graphene applications. But to make a functional transistor, a semiconducting material must be greatly manipulated, which can damage its properties. To prove that their platform could function as a viable semiconductor, the team needed to measure its electronic properties without damaging it. They put atoms on the graphene that donate electrons to the system, a technique called doping, used to see whether the material was a good conductor. It worked without damaging the material or its properties, the team's measurements show that their graphene semiconductor has 10 times greater mobility than silicon. In other words, the electrons move with very low resistance, which in electronics translates to faster computing. It's like driving on a gravel road versus driving on a freeway, to hear said. It's more efficient, it doesn't heat up as much, and it allows for higher speeds so that the electrons can move faster. The team's product is currently the only two-dimensional semiconductor that has all the necessary properties to be used in nanoelectronics, and its electrical properties are far superior to any other 2D semiconductors currently in development. And again, epitaxial graphene could cause a paradigm shift in the field of electronics and allow for completely new technologies that take advantage of its unique properties. The material allows the quantum mechanical wave properties of electrons to be utilized. 
which is a requirement for quantum computing. Yet another generation of electronics on its way. Before silicon, there were vacuum tubes, and before that, there were wires and telegraphs. Silicon is one of many steps in the history of electronics, and the next step could be graphene. To me, this is like a Wright Brothers moment to hear said. They built a plane that could fly 300 feet through the air, but the skeptics asked why the world would need flight when it already had fast trains and boats, but they persisted, and it was the beginning of a technology that can take people across oceans. For years, attempts to synthesize such a layer of semiconducting graphene were rendered unusable due to disorder, scattering, or other issues that plagued the material. With this new method of producing semiconducting epigraphene, the researchers present the first functional piece of semiconductor technology based on graphene. Our motivation for doing graphene electronics has been there for a long time and the rest was just making it happen, here said. We had to learn how to treat the material, how to make it better and better, and finally how to measure the properties. That took a very, very long time. The here sees this new technology as the tip of the iceberg for new discoveries. Undoubtedly, there is still a long way to go before graphene semiconductor production rivals that of today's silicon. This newly created functional graphene semiconductor has some major improvements in benefit. Graphene electronics are more efficient because they can require less energy to switch on and off. They also allow electrons to flow through the material with minimal resistance. With its special features, epitaxial graphene has the potential to revolutionize electronics and open the door to whole new technologies. The material makes it possible to use electrons' quantum mechanical wave characteristics, which is necessary for quantum computing. Other benefits are high electron transfer rate, large surface area, its ability to immobilize molecules and increase electrical conductivity. Graphene has major drawbacks which has prevented its use in electronics. One major issue is known as the band gap problem, Hay said. Scientists in the field have been trying to realize the exceptional conductivity of graphene in electronic circuits for over a decade. Also, creation of high-quality graphene is expensive and complex process and again, in order to grow graphene, toxic chemicals are being used at high temperatures. With its special features, epitaxial graphene has the potential to revolutionize electronics and open the door to whole new technologies. The material makes it possible to use electrons' quantum mechanical wave characteristics, which is necessary for quantum computing. Dekir claims that the arrival of yet another generation of electronics is nothing out of the ordinary. Wires and telegraphs existed before silicon and vacuum tubes existed before that. In the history of electronics, silicon was just one way forward graphene has powerfully taken over. That's where we wrap things up for this episode. It's actually a great deal sticking around until this point. Here's a quick recap of what to do before a new video is published. First up, be mindful of our uploading schedule and timing. You can also keep up with new video uploads by clicking the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. To freely support of work, you can return the favor by sharing our content and making this channel your home for valued information. Also, your feedback in the comment sections below is greatly valued, some of which will be featured in new video releases. Thanks for watching this episode and do have a splendid day.